Johnny Kim, Navy SEAL, doctor, astronaut, all that before his mid-30s. The internet called him the perfect Asian son. Hilarious. But no one can argue. This guy's f***ing impressive. He survived the Battle of Ramadi, one of the deadliest missions in Iraq. But the first time he faced death, he was just a kid. When I think about my life, I was a scared little boy. At 16, his father pulled a gun on his entire family and things turned ugly. For years, Johnny carried that guilt of what happened to his father. And he hated himself, hated his life. Until one of his friends got him into the SEALs. I thought that being a SEAL would solve all of my life's problems. I could not have been any more wrong. Young Johnny was 16, and his dad had been moving in and out of the house, struggling with heavy alcoholism. So on this particular day, I was home with my mother, and when he came home, yeah, I could smell the whiskey on his breath, so I knew he was, knew he was very intoxicated. But this time, Johnny sensed that there was something wrong. He knew something was up. I remember my father came up to me, and some of the last words he said to me was, I'm sorry, Jonathan. And he pepper sprayed my face. Then all I hear in the kitchen is my mother screaming for help and saying, he's got a gun. Johnny couldn't stay put. He had to do something about it. He had to confront him in some way. So I got up and I did my best to, to, to fight him and get that gun as hard as I could, as, as strong as I guess a 140 pound year old kid could do at the time. But I, I lost that fight. He was able to get a hold of a dumbbell nearby and smash my head in with it. And he was able to get his gun out of his pocket shot it in the air and I remember clearly um, pleading with him that we loved him and that he didn't have to do this. I clearly remember saying that it's not too late. And uh, in a moment of clarity that my father found, he decided not to shoot us, not to kill us, and I told him to go run. And that was the last time I saw my father. And his father ran out of the room. Johnny and his family survived one more day hoping they would never have to see him again. If only it could have ended right there. In the hysteria of that, my, my mother was on the phone and called 911 and screaming for help. And so eventually, you know, came back into my room that has access to the attic. And I noticed that things had shifted. And I noticed that there were, furniture was moved in such a way. Um, and I told the police that I think my father's still in the house and he's in the attic. So they, they did what they're trained to do. They sectioned off the area, confronted my father, and a, shots were fired. And uh, my father was killed. So I was 16 years old. And uh, I would say being lost was probably a good description of how I felt up until that time. And my buddy Keith told me with passion I've never seen before about a Navy SEAL. I thought that being a SEAL would solve all of my life's problems. I could not have been any more wrong. You know, when people ask me why I wanted to be a SEAL, it's so easy to come up with the superficial reasons. Like, yeah, I wanted to get paid to blow up stuff and jump out of planes and serve my country. But those are all superficial reasons. That is not why I wanted to be a team guy. I wanted to become a different person, to find my identity, be someone that could protect the people that I loved that couldn't protect themselves. And I knew from there that maybe, just maybe I had what it took to be a SEAL. He has always been the shy, quiet kid, the kind no one ever notices. But since the incident, something had changed in him. It was my ticket to escape the childhood I was born into. This idea of Jonathan that people had knew as a scared little boy. I needed a reset button. Like a lot of guys, I was just so hungry to be accepted, to be a good job. Like, look, I can put out, I'm an asset. Like, I want to be here because I want to be here. But when I showed up to Iraq, I was scared. My first deployment, I think it became very clear the situation we found ourselves in. 
With a sniper rifle in hand and a med kit strapped to his chest, Johnny moves into the infamous battle of Ramadi against Al-Qaeda. There, Johnny's best friend got caught in the middle of the firefight. You know, Ryan was, was hit in the face. I remember going on the roof and seeing Ryan lying down in a pool of his blood and just saying, just hang on, brother. We just hang on now. And uh, there's not much you can do as a medic in that type of situation. I'm keeping his airway open, stopping the bleeding, and that's it. He's keeping himself alive. Ryan's a trooper. I mean, he's, he was the best of us. The actions of that day, we lost two really good men. The death of Ryan left him broken. First his father, then his best friend. His whole world was falling apart. There are no right words for situations like that. But I think just being there with the people you love at your side is the most important thing to be doing. It took years for me to learn to be human again, to let go of that anger, to sublimate all those experiences, all that those raw emotions into good. And I'm not here to tell you I was never on the path to darkness. I think being a SEAL was maybe a little bit more selfish for the reasons we talked about, because I wanted a, to be a part of, I wanted to find my identity. I realized that it was completely born out of my situation with my father. I made a promise to Ryan that the void created by those warriors that would certainly have done good for this world. That I owe it, that we owe it to them to be a positive mark in this world. That was why I wanted to be a physician, to take that level of service to a higher calling. I mean, I do like medicine, but it's to serve to a cause greater than myself. Beyond the trauma, Johnny remembered his childhood room looking up at his Apollo poster hanging on the wall. And the first time I heard about NASA and this opportunity, that meant a lot to me. And that's when I put my name in the hat because it was completely consistent with my goals that I promised that I would, for the rest of my life, do something to impact positive good in our world. And I try and exercise that in everything I do, especially at NASA. Space was never on the horizon. And we talked a little bit about where I came from. That scared little boy that grew up under my father's shadow, I never thought I could have been a SEAL or a doctor or an astronaut. There's, there's no way. One of my favorite quotes is from Dr. Martin Luther King. Um, Everyone is capable of greatness not fame but greatness because greatness is determined by service and that's how i honor the brothers we lost and i will never stop until the day i die trying to fill in that void because it's a void that can never be filled in maybe i could reach out to those kids just like me who were scared tired, who don't think they can amount to anything, who don't think they're worth anything. If I could reach out to them and let them know that, hey, it doesn't matter where you're from. With the right attitude, with the right hard work, if you get up every time you fail, you can amount to something and you can do positive work. You can leave a good impact, a positive mark for our world. You can have a huge impact on the next generation of people who want to be a better version of themselves. Asha Tyson once said, there is no shortcutting to life. It took each and every situation you've encountered to bring you to the now, and now is right on time. Johnny said many times that he would never change one bit of his journey, that his traumas are just part of a greater story, that the greater good will always be more important than your past, your pain, and in some way yourself. Even if this suffering can break the strongest of people, 
Sometimes, it can also make them. It's probably a good idea that I stay in the wheelchair. My goal was to get better and kill him, actually. I shouldn't have went out that night. I should have stayed home. 